Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlotthauer here in the home weather office with another detailed U.S. weather forecast for January the 15th, 2024. In today's update, we are going to be taking briefly a look at the freezing rain and snow that is developing and falling across Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana, followed by another winter storm thereafter with the continuation of some very cold arctic air that remains in place so taking a look at the nam three kilometer model a meso model that i always like using this is also a high resolution model so we can really see in fine detail who's going to get the freezing rain who's going to get the snow and who's going to get some sleet so looking at the forecast for this afternoon we can see quite a bit of snowfall falling across kentucky west virginia Virginia, as well as, say, Tennessee, especially central and eastern Tennessee, going to get some wicked weather today. Some sleet, some freezing rain mixed in with snow, so that's going to lead to the possibility for power outages, travel impacts, so keep that in mind. If you're doing anything, if you're driving anywhere, please stay off the roads. That's all I ask. On the I-95 corridor, too, going to start getting some snow out of this winter storm. So going forward, let's take a look at this on how this is all going to evolve overnight tonight. This is right around 3 to 4 o'clock Eastern Time and still quite a bit of snowfall falling across Pennsylvania, West Virginia. If you're in Maryland, portions of Maryland, Delaware even, New Jersey, another round of snow that is anticipated with some freezing rain to the south and not to mention still some icy conditions down here across central Alabama southern Mississippi, so the possibility for more additional power outages, very dangerous, slick roadways, air travel cancellations or delays are certainly expected. And not only that, um, something that I wanted to point out too in this video is the amount of lake effect snow that has been falling thus far and will continue to do so even through maybe Tuesday and even into Wednesday or if not even Thursday, as long as this Arctic air mass stays on top. And so going forward, the snow really starts picking up and it looks like now we're going to have a weak to moderate nor'easter. Really not a lot of or not very strong winds out of this, but quite a bit of snow combined with the lake effect snow. Man, this is really, really impactful, the continuation of that. So uh, it looks like um, rest or rest of today or late tonight into Tuesday looks highly impactful and that continues all the way into Tuesday afternoon and evening here across Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, with the lake effect snow continuing across Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, as well as uh, Lake Michigan. Not looking good at all if you are doing anything traveling this weekend across, or this week I should say, across the Northeast. But good news is that that second part of the system down here will exit the region leaving everyone dry and it looks like that's how it will end up being by Wednesday but not to mention lake effect snow will continue over Buffalo New York over Watertown New York might have to squeeze in a live stream on this we'll have to wait and see on how things pan out doing some live camera footage you know on this because there's a camera in Watertown and We'll see how that pans out because, wow, that snow looks pretty stinking intense. So how much additional snowfall can you expect for Tennessee area? Well, some of the models now indicating potentially between 5 to 8 inches of additional snow, especially for eastern Tennessee, central Tennessee, more like 2 to 4 inches. For the northeast, we're looking at an additional, well, this hasn't really started accumulating yet, anywhere between three to five inches with some of the higher peaks possibly getting at seven to 10 inches of snowfall. Now, up here towards Buffalo, New York, Watertown, New York, these two areas, you might see an additional one to two feet of snow because again, lake effect snow, very localized. It is very impossible or extremely hard to even forecast who's gonna get the heaviest snow because this is all lake effect snow driven, right? If that band, doesn't move around very much, it can mean all the difference. In fact, if we go to the northeast sector here, or actually let's go to let's go to New York, right? Let's kind of click on this area really quickly. You can see 
Some of these areas, like Erie, Pennsylvania, may get additional six inches of snow, whereas some areas right here, like in Buffalo, New York, Watertown, New York, you might get almost three feet of additional snowfall in a couple of days. That is a possibility, and this changes around from run to run, so keep that in mind. And depending on what model run you look at, some models have this a lot lesser than others, but get prepared for more additional lake effect snow all the way through perhaps on Wednesday and even potentially even into Thursday. More additional power outages are expected as you could see an additional 10th to a quarter of an inch of ice, especially across southern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, central Alabama, as well as southeastern Tennessee might get an additional 10th to a quarter of an inch of ice that will result in more down power lines, power outages, that sort of thing. If you're in Virginia, between a hundredth to a couple of hundredths of an inch of ice with maybe more ice possible here over New Jersey and New York. Now that's on the NAM. Let's look at the HRRR model because it is a different model that um, has different outputs and also expecting a little bit of ice here over New Jersey, um, Connecticut, Massachusetts, maybe even across Rhode Island. Got to really uh, watch and monitor how this all pans out because this is in a very populated area and you know what that means? More people will likely be impacted. Even so, it's not that much. Probably over 5 or 10 million people will have a lot of ice, enough to lead to a lot of travel impacts. Sleet amounts, especially over Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, anywhere between about a tenth to a half an inch of sleet. And this is not the stuff that really causes problems, but it adds more to uh, the amount of ice that accumulates in many areas, resulting in more downed trees on top of that freezing rain with more sleet potentially over the extreme northeast, well, more like New York City area, as well as Cape Cod. Like I said, winds are not gonna be a whole big problem with this system, so that's the good news of this entire thing. Once the system passes its way through, though, you might get some northwesterly winds, some cooler winds coming out of the Arctic that might increase to about 10 to 20 miles an hour, but we're not talking anything enough to really result in wind-related power outages more like the freezing rain kind of thing. So now that we talked about that winter storm that's causing a lot of mayhem across the deep south, the southeast, and the eastern seaboard with power outages, that sort of thing, please be safe, folks. I'm here to warn you about any hazardous weather. You can only, I can only do my part at making sure you all are safe, but you have to do your part at basically acknowledging that it is dangerous. So now that system moves out of the area. We're having another winter storm. This one doesn't look to be as impactful, but it's going to reinforce the cold Arctic air. It's just going to be kind of another shot in the face with some cold air. So keep that in mind. Not so snowy or impactful, but impactful in the way of some much colder temperatures still continuing. By the way, lake effect snow, keep that in mind, will continue as long as this Arctic air mass is in place. Okay, so we get some snow across this region, uh, across the Great Lakes, the upper Midwest. Again, we're not talking a lot about accumulation here, maybe one to three inches at most, maybe even four inches perhaps, but we're not seeing a foot of snow. This is not one of those storm systems that's going to bring inches, if not feet of snow, not like we had with Winter Storm Jerry. Instead, it's going to be kind of a light snow, more like a flurry or two. Okay, and that's the good news, and then that moves off. But what's going to happen is that cold air is going to be in place, and the lake effect snow machine will continue as long as that air mass is, or that cold Arctic air mass from Canada remains in place. Now, switching gears here, now that we talked about this, we're also going to keep an eye on California and the Pacific Northwest. This go-around looks like California is going to have a storm sequence, Lots of rainfall, strong winds, maybe some power outages, maybe some river, small stream flooding as well. There is a marginal risk from the Weather Prediction Center for some flooding in that area of California. And that's day five, a marginal risk. We'll probably see this get upgraded to a slight risk in later outlooks, given the national blend of models. You could find out more information on that uh, on my Sacramento Weather Center YouTube. All right, there will be a link in the description leading to that. Don't 
leave the video. Stay here because I have more to talk about. But then after the video, go check that out. Please, I encourage you all to um, watch that video because it really covers pretty well on the localized Sacramento region. By Saturday night, more rainfall impacts the west. More rain for California, high elevation snow for this year. So we could see a lot of snow melt here. That would lead to the exacerbation of flooding on small creeks and streams, some river flooding, and it just continues. The storm series continues in early next week with more rain, gusty winds, that sort of thing, with more rain popping back into the forecast over Oklahoma and the Midwest. But what you don't see is snow. It's going to go away. That Arctic air mass is going to be modified and it's going to go north. And so you're going to go from snow to seeing some rain. And that could be a problem because that could mean more snow melt, warmer temperatures, and we could see some flooding. That's all that I have to say on this system is we'll have to see on how models um, kind of handle that. The GFS, on the other hand, is pretty similar with its output at showing quite a bit of rainfall over the Midwest and the Southeast. But you notice no more cold Arctic air masses by middle to late next week. I think we're going to start seeing things thaw out and that's what everyone likes to hear about i'm sure how much rainfall could you see now because uh, uh, of how much storms we're going to see across the west depending on what model you look at is going to depend on a whole lot right if we look at the gfs model let alone yeah there's more rain on the way for the deep south uh for like texas you might get an additional six to ten inches of rain some portions of louisiana here might get as much as a foot of rainfall in the next 10 days that's like an inch and a quarter per day on average if we look at the previous run though it's really going willy washa willy-nilly crazy it's going back and forth if we look at the european model pretty similar in that 10-day forecast with a lot of rain here for the deep south not so much for louisiana though interesting that the gfs is not in good agreement that's the thing with the euro has been in excellent agreement that this area especially could get the most rainfall including for california as you can see there we might get three to five inches more importantly if we look at the national blend of models okay which is a super blend you can see here um a lot of rainfall for california and a lot of rain for the deep south here again there's gonna be some flood problems i'm sure about some river rises because of freezing rain maybe some snow in this area it's going to just exacerbate things. But I guess on the good side of things, temperatures will warm up eventually. Not right away. We're going to get through this week or half of this week with temperatures below average, right? With that Arctic air mass that is in place, right? By uh, Wednesday or by Tuesday morning, still some areas here, native 10 to native 25 degrees below zero very cold we're talking some dangerously cold temperatures with apparent temperature values right around negative 20 to negative 45 degrees perhaps yeah that is really really significant all right including for texas that's why wind chill advisories wind chill warnings do remain in effect and that's going to continue all the way through wednesday it's not until we get into Thursday and then on Friday where we get this modified air mass before another Arctic uh, invasion tries to roll down into the Midwest by the weekend. But after that, I think we're going to see a whole pattern change. The, uh, we're going to see a ridge in the Midwest. We're going to see the Arctic air retreat northward because of a positive phase of the Arctic oscillation. And that means warmer and lower latitudes colder and higher latitudes that air mass is modified northward right but before we get there it is going to be excruciating we're talking about wind chill values and overnight temperatures saturday five days from now right around negative 10 to negative 25 degrees with wind chill values as cold as negative 50 perhaps over iowa that is very significant for that area to see and then you still have this going through the next five to six days. And then after that, that's when the cooler air really will move northward. And look at this. Portions of, say, Minnesota and Wisconsin could have some of the warmest temperatures so um, in January, perhaps, like in Wisconsin, might be seeing temperatures in the 
low 40s, upper 30s. Yeah, you don't see that very often. So definitely on a lot warmer note, including for central Indiana, southern Indiana, might see temperatures in about 10 days in the mid to upper 50. Your temperature anomaly shows the same thing. Much colder air moving through right now. That will continue all the way through much of this week where you do have below average temperatures. Look at this. Might even see temperatures 30 to 40 degrees below average in Iowa, in Tennessee, 30 degrees below normal. So definitely some cold air remaining in place this week. But then look at this. Watch this. We go and look at the European model. Way different story, right? Much warmer than average across much of the eastern half of the nation. So goodbye, Arctic air, and welcome back to zonal flow and ridging for the Midwest that will grant well above average temperatures. This is well reflected in the latest 6 to 10 day outlook from the Climate Prediction Center, a indication that the Arctic air mass will depart. There's an 80% chance that Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan will thaw out. Versus if you're in Indiana, there's a 50% chance that you'll have above average temperatures. But I mean, look at this. Much of the nation here are gonna flip flop from the cold weather to the warmer version that we are all too familiar with, like what we had in December, including for California, gonna have above average temperatures, but that doesn't mean so much for dry weather. If we look at the six to 10 day outlook, there's a 70 to 80% chance that California will have above average rainfall and high elevation snowfall, including for Texas, classic El Nino pattern there for central southern area, 70 to 80% chance versus if you are in the northern plains below average and for the northeast you're gonna have below average this continues over the next 8 to 14 days where the deep south will remain wetter than average like dallas houston oklahoma city new orleans jackson memphis yep so that means the european model may be on something versus the gfs outlook and including for california likely to remain slightly above average for the next 14 days Temperature wise, though, too, looking at a very mild uh, mid to late January. I mean, look at this. For Indiana, back into the warmth again, an 80% chance that central northern Indiana will have above average temperatures. Well, anyways, that is going to sum it up for today's video, folks. If you did enjoy it, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any weather updates across the channel and of course in your neck of the woods because we have lake effect snow we got some freezing rain ice conditions severe weather perhaps well not really severe weather but you got some thunderstorms down there in central northern florida but be sure you do subscribe it really means a lot folks can do these without your diligent support but not only that be sure to also check out the sacramento weather center youtube channel there's a link in the description below this video. Just launch that today. Go check it out. See what you think because that is only for the Sacramento region. So for the grass valleys, for the foothills of the Sierra, for the mountains of the Sierra, for the Sacramento Valley, for Redding, for Red Bluff, point south towards Merced. So if you are in these areas, please check that out. It really means a lot. I know Raptor's on there already. Got a few people already subscribed. Actually, we're already up to 30 subscribers. So thank you all for that support. But that's going to do with today's update. I'll be back with you more tomorrow.